day is Paris, as in I'm traveling to Paris because it's the Ballon d'Or. By pure chance, I imagine that Leo Messi is there already with his entourage, family, etc. He's obviously going to win it. And Aitana von Marti as well. Both of them absolutely deserve it. Von Marti won the uh, World Cup, won the Champions League, was the best player of both competitions, won the league with Barcelona, uh, the Super Cup as well has been scoring goals. He's, she's like a mixture of Xavi and Iniesta, using the words, for instance, of Pep Guardiola, who compared him to, uh, to Iniesta, but others that know him uh, or play with her say this more like Xavi, and she's been superb, so best player in the world. For Leo Messi, pff, I mean, I've got plenty of stats to show you. For instance, not only won the three trophies, this is a microphone, there's a story for this, three trophies during the 22-23 season, the World Cup, like one, Trophy the Champions as well. An interesting one, uh, he produced 67 goal contributions during the Ballon d'Or voting period. This is one more than Haaland. Nobody got as many. He was named man of the match in five of Argentina and seven World Cup matches. He won the World Cup. And with PSG, chipped in with 21 goals and 20 assists. No doubt that uh, he is going to win it. He might not be the last one. Imagine that Inter Miami wins the um, the MLS. He becomes the best player of the MLS. And Argentina win the uh, Copa America. Will the new consider him as a candidate to win it next? So the yes, the Ronaldo Messi era is finished. Now we've got the Bellingham, Mbappé, Haaland, Messi era. I think he's still going to be around for a while. Maybe even in the World Cup in two years' time. Nobody wants to talk to him about it, but uh, he doesn't need to run a lot. He's very intelligent in the way he does things. Anyway, so I'm on my way to Paris. I'll show you a few things from there. But before I fly, and I'm at the Barcelona airport, before I fly, I have to do a bit of CBS and a bit of BBC. So let me let me show you where my office is today. Basically here. <laughs> the computer, the camera, um, the iPad with notes. This is for the microphone. I'm definitely in an airport. So anyway, gonna do some of this and I'll take you around with me. It's gonna be dark, it's been great. It's been great, I think, but I'm in Paris. It's around 6 p.m. and I've gone two hours to uh, get to the hotel, drop the stuff and head to the ceremony everything. Was just you know, simple one. Oh, right. Okay. Got some water and some wine. And a very big bet. Got to go. I'm a bit stressed, just a tiny little bit, because I realised that uh, the time to pick up accreditations it's over. <laughs> I'm getting half an hour before the start of the ceremony, and I don't have a pass. Will I get one? Who knows? Otherwise, I will still tell you what it's like from the outside of it, because I'm on my way. Push me look. The place to get the accreditation is closed. Now I'm going to the theatre and see if I'm lucky enough to actually get in. No good, no good. of the uh, Ballon d'Or and they said run, run because he's starting the whole thing in 20 minutes and you may have the accreditation here so fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Got to go around it for the accreditations. Over there, somewhere in the white tent. This is not the way. That's a happy face. Got my pass. Now I've got to go to the top. Let's see what we find. I think this is like the back entrance of the theatre, obviously. Red carpet, but not the one where all the stars have gone through. Media entrance. Yes, I, I come in. Four yeah, minutes. no, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, I can see one of the journalists too. for the translation, no? Uh, the, in the press room it is open until midnight and 30. Okay. okay. You will have two press conferences after the ceremony. Okay. You will have the Wi-Fi inside. That's great. For you and for you. Yeah. Okay? And now ceremony that way, yeah? Yes. Okay. Ballon d'Or 2023 goes to Aitana Bonmati. Estoy muy orgullosa de recibir el Ballon d'Or esta noche. Ha sido un año excepcional a nivel deportivo y aunque se trata de un premio individual, el fútbol es un deporte colectivo. Así que me gustaría extender el premio a todas mis compañeras, staff trabajadores de, del Barça y la Selección, porque está claro que sin todos los éxitos conseguidos este año, yo no estaría hoy aquí. Finally, congratulations to all the nominees. All of them are great and inspiring footballers. As role model, we have a responsibility on and off the pitch. We should be more than athletes. Keep leading by example and keep fighting together for a better, peaceful and equal world. Merci. The 2023 Ballon d'Or France football footballer is Lionel Messi. En esta en esta noche eh, tengo la suerte de, de haber estado muchos años en esta gala y, y lo, los jugadores se van se van renovando, renovando pero pero el nivel no baja nunca así que que vamos a seguir disfrutando muchos años más. So, this is where the press conference took place. Y los últimos dos son especiales porque vienen de la mano de, de la selección, algo que durante toda mi carrera era como que se me venía eh, negando y al final terminó cambiando y siendo, siendo diferente y mucho más este que viene de la mano de, del Mundial, ¿no? con lo que eso significa para... Para, para, un argent, para, un, para un jugador y sobre todo para nosotros, que los argentinos, de la manera que, que, que lo vivimos, de la importancia que le damos al, al fútbol y por, por volver a ser campeón del mundo después de, 
de, de mucho tiempo otra vez, ¿no? Time. Uh, here, some people say no, but Haaland deserved it more. It's a World Cup, it's a Hollywood, Hollywood type of uh, story this year for Leo. In this press conference, uh, he said a couple of things that you may be interested in. One, that he wants to come back to Barcelona at some point in some capacity. He said it before, but it's good to hear it. No, 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 sé. La verdad que no, no lo sé. Obviamente, me, me encantaría a mí poder despedirme de, de la gente de otra. De, de otra manera porque eh, creo que quedó una sensación eh, rara cuando, cuando me fui y, y creo que, que, que no está bueno ¿no? con todo lo que compartimos y vivimos juntos con todo lo que, lo que me dio el club a mí y yo le di al club que, que no terminemos de una, de una manera que tengamos terminada, creo que, que me merezco poder poder despedirme de esa gente que, que tanta, tanta alegría y tristeza hemos compartido durante toda, toda mi carrera. Eh, Barcelona es, es mi casa, amo el club, amo la gente de, de Barcelona y, y bueno, si se da, eh, eh, encantado de, de, de poder estar, obviamente. Two, that uh, he doesn't want to put a time to finish his career. Could be one year, two years, three years, because in football, uh, you just never know. You never know. This is it. You never know. That's what he said. Oh, what? Oh, I've got this idea, this impression that uh, he will play another World Cup. Anyway, Aitana Bomati, and this goes for Aitana and for other players like, like Vinicius, Drop as well, Gary Lineker, uh, Djokovic when he came on the stage as well. They're all mentioning the fact that the platform they've got as athletes should be used for good causes. And I don't think their stand has been so open about doing that in the past. Certainly, um, Vinicius made a very clear stand on, on racism, uh, invited by Drogba to do so, Drogba insisted on that, and that got one of the big standing ovations. What else? It was a show full of glamour. All the players love to be part of this, and I know that they all say, you know, individual trophies are less important than collective. Yes, of course, but individual trophies for them mean a lot and the families. And it's a time to look back and see what, what, where they come from and who helped them. And it's a time to give those homages to those that helped them. Aitana that tells a good story, very good story, how she was the only girl in the team that she was playing, the amount of insults that she got. And that has never been fully forgotten. Uh, and that has been a source of motivation and now in the team that he was in, there are girls teams. So, a good night. Um, one that I like being part of as, in, as a journalist. Uh, I think last year, I seem to remember, I was in, invited to the um, red carpet. Can't remember how I got that. I cannot remember. I could have used the same trick, whatever that was. And now just uh, gonna walk around Paris for a little while and head away from France, I'll be doing La Liga TV, I'll be also starting advertising, talking about Messi, that the uh, Messi update is coming out uh, on the 16th of November in English for the UK market, that I will be in Birmingham on the 24th of November. We're going to do a little chat about the book, for whoever, whoever wants to be there, they need to get some tickets uh, that are, I think, it's about, I don't know how many, really, but not many. And I enjoy doing those things, as you well know, those that follow me. What else? Oh, the BBC have advertised again the podcast that we've got out there. It's also uh, a um, documentary on iPlayer, uh, Messi, Destiny, where we tell the story of the World Cup as well as his own story. That's it. Just going to go for a walk. It's not too cold. It's quite nice. Not many people around. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, by the same... And you cannot see it, but right at the end there is the Eiffel Tower. The lights are off. So I hope you enjoy this latest version of Coffee with Guillem, in which I did not have coffee. <laughs> I need to have more coffee in these videos. Good night. <laughs>